Hello and welcome back to another round of Divinity Original Sins 2, the Definitive Edition. My name is Saiken and we're going to play on Honor Mode, the highest difficulty, with even further improved enemies. It's time to mop up act number one. Uh, first things first, we're going to level up. Um, it is important at the beginning to continue leveling with intelligence, so we're focusing solely on that. Geomancy and Pyromancy for now are fine. Um, I am going to splash in a single point of Hydro, uh, and you're going to see uh, why, because uh, there are going to be some Hydro skills, specifically the defensive ones, that are incredibly good. Continue um, improving Thievery as well, so we already uh, almost have an Elementarist uh, setup already uh, from the get-go, so the character is developing nicely. First things first, as always, uh, loot whatever you can do. And we are making our way to the city. It is important, and I'm going to be very precise on that, to not engage enemies for now. I know it's tempting and you can do it, but there is really no benefit in doing it. Instead, I would recommend... Uh, just uh, looting everything that you need. I'm personally just uh, reading through the books uh, that I will find to gain skills. Um, take uh, the sharp rocks and specifically take uh, the penny bun mushrooms which you find here because they are going to be important for uh, creating potions just a little bit later. So Next thing, we're going to pick up a shovel up here, right there, and we're going to pick up the last bedroll right there. Now all four of our characters theoretically have a bedroll and can use it to recover out of combat. Good. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to um, listen to a dialogue but um, that's going to happen right over here so we're making our way straight to the city uh, collecting some additional resources and I think we're done with all of the resources here so just go through the dialogue let it happen if you haven't played the game before, I highly recommend, of course, listening to all of uh, this. And once the scenery clears a little bit... Yep, we can start moving in. Again, eat whatever you... whatever you can. Sometimes you are getting skills out of it. I've gotten first aid from it. Good. So first, uh, things that we now want to do once we've looted everything. I think we're done here. No, oh, that's a long branch. We're going to go for crafting soon, but before we do that, let's get our party together. So, first, uh, first thing here is we're going to help Eben to solve this conflict, uh, Ethan, to solve this conflict. We're not going to let them just uh, take uh, the money. Um, we're going to ask uh, why she owes money. And then we're going to uh, tell them to back off, which solves uh, the quest and uh, basically Ethan now starts to join us. Uh, Ethan is going to be, at least I'm going to build him um, as our melee character and what I want him to do is I want him to focus on I want him to focus on what are you looking for exactly? A the metamorph. There we go. He scans the right you are. 
a Dexter-based uh, character. We're going to uh, use him mainly to crowd control. There's the second character that we're going to uh, take, Losa. She's going to be our support character, and I'm going through the builds just in a second. Um, so we uh, want to make her a summoner. There we go. So the conjurer, uh, the conjurer type. Yes. Thank you. Which brings us to our third companion. And Seville is going to be our damage dealer. Keep in mind, she's the only elf that you could uh, get, so I uh, would recommend uh, making her a damage dealer. We're not going to make her a rogue. We're going to make her a ranger. There we go. Good. So now that we do have all of uh, the characters available, I would recommend that we're doing some crafting and some inventory management. So all of uh, the other characters that you do have should get a bit of uh, generic armor. Uh, starting with uh, buckets and you should start handing over the sleeping mats to all of uh, them as well. Before I will um, go through all of their inventories, let's just do a little bit of um, inventory management, shall we? So first things first, let's upgrade all of uh, the weapons and put them or uh, put them into a pos uh, into a position that we uh, would want them to be in so number one we're going to use all uh, each of uh, the weapons that we're going to use uh, should be poisoned in this case both of uh, the bows should be poisoned we're also poisoning the pocket knives which is what Ifan is going to use um, I will show you a few other uh, crafting recipes right away. Uh, you can and should use the empty bottles in order to create potions out of them. Um, the uh, empty bottles plus the penny bun mushrooms essentially uh, create healing potions. Personally, for the healing potions, since most of uh, most of the characters now have around 50 hit points, uh, they are okay for 30 hit points. You can always put two potions in here, combine them, and upgrade them. The next highest tier heals 90 hit points, so that's definitely an option. Next uh, um, uh, recipe that I wanted to show you is the option to uh, to essentially gain firestorm grenades, and we're going to start uh, with uh, doing that a little bit. Um, we do have uh, quite a few empty cups and we do have quite a few bottles of wine. So you can combine those, essentially emptying the bottles of uh, wine, creating glasses of wine which we're going to sell. The more important uh, piece is the, um, are the empty bottles. Um, right here because we can fill them with oil and oil can and then they can be um, transformed into grenades so next thing we're going to um, we're going to empty as many bottles as we can same principle by the way holds true with beer only difference is that the beer uh, the mark of beer that we uh, create isn't worth a lot, whilst the wine essentially is worth quite a bit. So we got ourselves seven empty bottles. Next thing that I wanted to show you is creating arrow tips. Any form of pocket knife will uh, pocket knife or sword or uh, knife uh, will do. Um, 
You can use it on stones in order to create arrowheads. Uh, they are the base for any arrow production and basically any form of locks um, or wood will uh, do for the shafts. So I found myself a few short sticks here which directly creates the arrow shafts. Uh, you can also use long branches which then create short sticks which then create even more arrow shafts. You can also use logs which then create long branches which then create short sticks you get the point. At the end of uh, this we have created a lot of arrow shafts which we're going to use for the arrows. For now we have a limited a limited um, yeah, um, option of uh, how to create uh, arrows. My personal favorite uh, since we're using fire uh, magic for the beginning is to simply tip the arrowheads um, into poison, creating poisonous arrowheads and then using the poisonous arrowhead uh, together with one of the arrow shafts and there you go. Uh, without really a lot of effort you already got yourself three poisonous arrows. Uh, they are not only poison the enemies uh, as AoE damage but they also explode if uh, the enemy is on fire. And you might uh, see how this goes nicely together with firestorm grenades. So uh, there is quite a bit that you could do at the uh, beginning uh, to uh, to simply um, create um, uh, create uh, useful items for yourself. Uh, the wood chips can be used later. So now that we've done that, I'll show you a little bit more that you could do. In this specific case, we're going to use one of our characters here, Sibyl, and we're simply going to collect things that we need, metal scraps. The boots aren't bad, sharp piece of metal. We're going to take whatever resource uh, we need, minor healing potion, Yeah, the hammer is useful. There we go. More pieces of metal. So all of uh, this here is useful. I'll uh, keep it a bit shorter and once I'm done looting her. So once you're done with everything, you basically just stand here and Yep, she will... Uh, oh yeah, I should have told you. Uh, so once you're done with that, you're running away as far as you can, really out of uh, line of sight. And then you allow her to search. She will not find anything and will ask herself uh, what just happened. And this is one of uh, the few techniques that you can apply. Uh, in terms of getting some starting equipment. Now let's take a look what we've uh, gotten ourselves uh, into. Um, we got quite a bit of sharp metal here, uh, which we can use in order to create more arrowheads for ourselves. Uh, once you work on the items, they are no longer recognized as uh, being stolen. So that's quite helpful. Oops, sorry. Uh, so that's quite helpful. Uh, we're going to use the nails and that's the next uh, sort of um, recipe that I'm going to show you. Any pair of boots together with a pair of nails can be combined and the boots then have an immunity to slipping. Extremely useful uh, specifically on frozen ground. Uh, we're going to hand that over to our melee character because he's going to walk quite a bit over frozen ground uh, as the story continues. So I think we're good for now. I'll just double check um, and make some more arrowheads. All right, next uh, thing is uh, we are talking to 
uh, this prisoner here, essentially gaining a, nit, uh, a little uh, quest. We caught him stealing from our kitchen, supplies, a crate of food, citrus in particular. All I want is my supplies. <coughs> Happy to let this clown die in a gun. Ain't been here long, have ya? He twirls his knife, but divine's gone. This blade. Good. We got ourselves a quest uh, to gain the stolen fruit. Uh, that's going to be uh, quite easy. Um, there's another thing happening here that you should be aware about. We now have a black cat following us. Once you leave uh, the compound here, she's going to start following you. If you can keep her alive. Uh, until after the keep, you will essentially gain her as a companion. Um, I will hope uh, that we're going to uh, use her as a companion on our main uh, character to give him some uh, extra abilities. You can summon her and essentially teleport on her uh, on her ground. If you're using the mod to respec, like I am doing it, there's going to be the mirror here. Um, it's, I think, a good time uh, to go through the actual builds that we're going uh, to see. So Ifan is going to be our um, our frontline character. You can start with the normal build at level one and essentially develop him him into the correct direction. We're going to give him 11 strength because he's going to carry heavier plate, uh, but he's fighting with uh, one hand uh, weapon, um, a dagger, so he's going to be finesse based. Uh, finesse based. As combat abilities, we're going to start with one uh, skill point and polymorph, as I wanted him uh, uh, to start uh, with. We're going to start with one point in Warfare, um, and then afterwards we're directly going into Scoundrel. So that's the starting um, the starting uh, point. Polymorph has a lot of interesting skills, as well as offers additional attribute points. So with Polymorph, um, we got not only four, but a fifth uh, point just due to this one point in Polymorph that we had. Um, since he is um, uh, one of the humans. Uh, we're going to, uh, you can now either go into bartering, like I will do it, uh, um, uh, to to give uh, one of your characters the ability to, to gain um, cheaper prices, or you could um, essentially also go for another thievery character. Both uh, works. I prefer the bartering route and in terms of skills, since he has Warfare, uh, might as well give him Executioner, which whenever he kills a character, he will regain um, two ability points. So that's going to be him. He's uh, our frontline character. Um, next up, we're going to go with Losa, and uh, Losa is going to be our Summoner. Summoner is used to have no stat whatsoever, um, in definitive edition, summonings uh, scale with intelligence, but make no mistake, we need her for additional other duties. She's going to uh, basically have intelligence, uh, a lot of memory and wits. We're going to skill her uh, based on intelligence as her main stat. We're going to skill as much memory as needed to give her a wide variety of skills uh, because she's going to uh, use a lot of cheap skills to support the team. And the wits here doesn't only allow her to start early in, in the combat, it also allows her from the get-go to find certain hidden um, uh, passages. So uh, 13 respectively 14 uh, wits is what you should have on one of your characters um, and I'll tell you the exact passages that uh, that you will be able to, uh, to find. Um, now it would be easy to simply go for summoning and uh, basically call it a day and if you would go for a pure summoning build that would be the right way to do it but we're not going for a pure summoning build. We're uh, skilling Hydra 1 uh, simply uh, because it has a lot of good buffs and we're going to skill Geomancy 1 and you're going to see also why that is the case. Um, Losa is going to go into Thievery as well um, and as talents we are 
going to give her the either elemental affinity, which is pretty decent, or the mnemonic, um, which I think we're going to start with that. She can still get uh, elemental affinity a bit later, but she's going to have a lot of skills in mnemonic, uh, gives you three additional points uh, in the memory attribute, um, making her one of the most versatile characters. Uh, she is going to mainly rely on summonings, but there are additional skills. Um, as for the damage abilities for Sibyl, she's going to be a pure finest based character for the uh, beginning. Um, her abilities will re revolve around Huntsman and Huntsman um, skills as any physical skill wonderfully with warfare so she's going to scale one point into warfare um, you theoretically could uh, give her the pyrokinetic ability um, and one point in it isn't bad for the beginning she can haste herself she can give herself um, cl uh, clear mind so I think I'm going to stay with it. It is absolutely viable as well to go for another warfare uh, point. Uh, going forward, we're going to scale Huntsman up to level 2 uh, when needed, and uh, everything else will go into warfare for now. Um, we can make her our lore master uh, to uh, identify the, uh, the items uh, that we're coming across. For now, we're going to put her into thievery, um, both definitely works and she's uh, going to be an executioner to make sure that uh, we get additional skill points back when we're killing enemies. So that's it for the builds uh, for the be uh, beginning. Let me set up all of the skills and then we're going to come back. Matter of fact, you know what, before we do that, um, let's actually get some skills and I'll show you why thievery is a very decent mechanic that's going to allow us to actually set up our party quite well. So we're starting with uh, some easy uh, thievery and um, I'll explain the core concept and then you're going to uh, we're going to reapply it over and over and over. So first of all the uh, is a potential quest over here. Secondly, oh, we we don't have a scroll yet. I don't want to use the restoration scroll. So if you heal him, um, and we will do that uh, soon, you will get a card of decks. But let's not uh, let's not go into quests uh, yet. Um, instead, we're uh, we're simply going to uh, talk to her. You always want your character that is stealing to be detached from the group. Um, uh, when you're having a character that is stealing, uh, the C button allows you to sneak and you have a pretty clear vision of where you could um, uh, and could not sneak. So the visions of every single character that's exactly the position that i want her to be in so let's start a dialogue um, the positions of every single char uh, character so the view uh, points of every single character are outlined in this uh, kind of red shape you can see it here um, as long as you're not in uh, such a uh, in in plain sight you will not be discovered now what the actual F. Let me take care of the dog here real quick. All right, dog's being taken care of. Back to the tutorial of how to steal. So um, you can fix the position of some of the NPCs by simply talking to them, essentially making their line of uh, vision constant. Now, as soon as we pickpocket, uh, every single character can only be pickpocketed once, so it's important that you know what you're doing. Every single item here has a value um, in pickpocketing, so you can only uh, steal as as much as uh, the maximum value. If you go over it, uh, it's gonna be a problem. As long as you haven't stolen anything, uh, you can always continue to pickpocket, but once you steal the first item, you need to be on spot. So, 
talk to the character, um, keep that character busy, and then essentially start uh, uh, sneaking. With two thievery, you can um, get uh, three of these uh, skills. Uh, I want to have uh, the first three of uh, those, and then essentially we're going to take whatever else is left. So we're taking one, two, three, and we're taking this and whatever we can get done. So once you're done with the act of stealing, move your character that has stolen a decent portion away and finish uh, the dialogue. The NPC will realize that uh, she has been stolen from and whilst uh, she's um, figuring that out, she will then ask us uh, to allow us to search the bags. Uh, of course, none of uh, the stuff is here anymore, so she can't really be mad about it. Uh, also, one thing, if you're ever being caught in a difficult uh, spot, you can essentially learn the skills even if someone is not standing right uh, next to you. Okay, Ethan knows all of uh, those skills, should have checked beforehand. Um, he knows uh, those three skills, but it's not a loss. We need the skill books for later anyway. So what we're going to do is, uh, or what I suggest uh, doing is using the absolute same person to steal from all of the vendors once. In this case, it's going to be Sibyl. Um, and I'm going to show you where you will find the vendor. So vendor number one for um, polymorph skills is down here, Dr. Lester. She uh, can be easily pickpocketed. Vendor number two is a necromancer, Mona. Um, same deal, really. Um, and you can get all of the necromancy books from her. Good, vendor number three. going to be Nebora here. Nebora has all of the summoning uh, abilities. By the way, she's an excellent vendor um, to, to talk to regularly. I would always recommend buying short sticks out of uh, from her long branches, any form of uh, sharp rocks that you can find, even sharp pieces of metal. So basically crafting materials that you, uh, that you need and that are super cheap. Empty potion bottles, not so much. Uh, intestines if she has it uh, as well so uh, really the very very cheap uh, stuff the needles are not uh, needed so that can easily uh, be p purchased off of her um, and you can uh, you can uh, wait um, or regularly check with her if you don't know how the vendors work in uh, in a nutshell they are refreshing every uh, one hour or uh, whenever your party levels up. So uh, that's uh, all you need to know uh, for it. Uh, mm, let's get uh, Sibyl in here and we're going to steal the skills from her as well. So the next one is a bit more difficult. Uh, mm, we're having Butter here and Butter has all of the archery skills. Make sure that her friend Hilda, who's regularly patrolling up and down and up and down, is also being spoken with. By the way, she's the one having scoundrel skills, so you want to maybe tag team to get both of uh, them. Uh, once you've done it you uh, and got both of them um, in a discussion, you're essentially good to go at least to get uh, the skills from Butter. All right, same principle for Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Hilda here, by the way. So you essentially get both of them uh, to talk and then uh, once she's out of range you might sneak up on her. All right next up we're going to uh, Rob Rezik. He's the Hydromancer uh, trainer or skill merchant. Uh, you will find him on the left hand side on the marketplace. Just get him into a conversation and as soon as uh, the guards and the other uh, pesky little people here will go away. You can essentially rob the skill books from him, which uh, almost means that we're done with robbing skills. 
Almost. So, I just learned... Gotta keep this guy busy as well. And then we're going to steal. Alright, next up, we're having the uh, Aeromancer Trainer. Oh, Skillbook Merchant uh, guy uh, of the name of Gavin. He can be found... Uh, essentially near the market space on the left hand side same uh, deal really talk to the npcs and essentially start pickpocketing him okay and next up we got mayo mayo is going to be our earth magic or geomancy skill book vendor you will find him on uh, the very southern part of the shore right here he's really an easy target for pickpocketing. Just talk to him and essentially steal the skills. The next one is a little bit tricky. Uh, Stingtail, as he's also the NPC that is involved in quite a few of the quests. Don't bring Sibyl here because she's going to kill him right away, uh, making it impossible to steal from him again at a later time. So we want to be careful here. You can find him right down here in the re Dreamer's resting place. Luckily for us, we got a few uh, people that can steal. Solos is going to take the job. You don't even need to um, talk to him because he's simply dreaming at the moment. And there are a couple of really good skills here that we're going to take. Haste, Ignition, Peace of Mind, all of that is helpful. He also possesses the unusually large orange, which we're going to uh, get once um, uh, Sibyl has killed him. Um, uh, we can also get whatever else is needed here. And um, off we go. We are still requiring one more skill merchant. Okay, so the last skill merchant is within this cave, uh, which you can find right uh, near where we started uh, with Dr. Let's. Uh, we're going inside, um, and here he is. He's going to be the war. Uh, Farah skill uh, skill merchant. Just talk to him, hide yourself, but be aware that these kids are roaming around and sometimes can spot you out. So uh, you got to be fast when you're stealing from him. All right, to finish up the series, just a uh, last bit of crafting advice. Uh, if you can get your hand on to other barrels, I've gotten a free water barrel. Uh, you might want to just take it, teleport to the beginning and put it here whenever you need it. Water barrels are also incredibly helpful because I uh, talked about the intestines. You can combine intestines plus water barrels to get a water balloon. So if you need um, to stand on water um, or extinguish fire, that's a good start. You can also fill up uh, empty bottles with water, although that's not as effective as if you would use oil in that regard. You can use water as well for water arrows to make water arrow heads. Also, once you have um, uh, discovered the recipes, you can simply uh, click on them right here. And essentially what you can do is um, you can select the maximum number of arrows that you would want uh, to, uh, to get and the game automatically will combine. So a little trick to make it faster. Uh, water arrowheads definitely function as well. So uh, there you go. That's the water arrowhead. Um, similarly combinable with uh, arrow shafts um, as well. I'm not using water arrows too often, but if you want to wet ten the enemies, uh, that is definitely the way to go. Uh, short update uh, towards the party. Um, one little thing that I should uh, notice, we were able to steal um, a random item, um, the magical scale helmet. So we even got necromancy now on Psykins, uh, which is a nice addition just to dish out some more damage. What we're now going to do is we're learning all of uh, the skills and essentially setting up the skill boards for every single character. And then uh, this... Uh, mm, uh, episode is going to be over. 
One further crafting recipe that we, you should know about uh, before ending the video, the Whisper Woods that we found combined with empty uh, potion bottles are going uh, to be small magical armor potions. Uh, they can be quite uh, useful, so I would recommend you using uh, them uh, intensively as well. We're now going to sell most of our stuff, uh, plus uh, look uh, through the vendors to get some basic items for every single character, and then uh, the session should be over. All right, let's take a short look before we end the video uh, regarding the potential skills. So Ifan, our uh, melee tank, will go in with Battering Ram and Bull's Horn, essentially allowing him to move quite a bit through the enemies and with Battering Ram also uh, get them down. We got Backlash as a repositioning skill, very cheap and highly effective. And we got Chicken Claw as a hard uh, CC. You can already see he has more skills than he has memory slots, so we're soon going to expand his ability um, to memorize um, additional skills because he needs them. Those who already got mnemonic um, has conjuration skills, uh, mainly the incarnate plus a couple of infusions, and she's going to use armor, frost, and fortify, which is an incredible helpful um, ability set for this difficulty. Um, I highly recommend specifically on your mage characters, so in this ca uh, case Losa and Saiken, to uh, get both of uh, those skills um, if you do have Hydro and Geomancy. She also has Restoration and Rain as a skill. Uh, Saiken definitely needs more memory slots as well. You can see he has quite a few alternatives here. I went with Fossil Strike, Searing Daggers and uh, Contamination plus Ignition com uh, combo. You will see uh, how this is going to work out. And finally, Low, uh, finally, Sibyl, um, who has the, pretty much the standard loadout plus um, the first aid skill. We also ordered um, her additional arrows uh, down here, so it's going to work out well. In terms of equipment, just to go through that as well, um, you can see that I've equipped every single one with really basic items, and this is, uh, in my perspective, also super important. Before you even start the armor run, make sure you got your bases covered. Uh, before we engage the first enemy in this run, we already got equipment, we already got skills, and we're like ready uh, ready to go. The party is so much stronger than as if Saiken would kind of go into the wilds by himself. I hope this video was helpful for you to um, effectively get a foothold uh, in the game, and the next video we'll uh, talk a little bit about which uh, quests we're going to do in which uh, order in order to level up the characters a bit more. By now you should also be level 2-ish, um, and we're continuing to um, uh, gain some levels and do all of the quests in Fort Joy. Thank you for watching. As always, leave a uh, comment and a like down below, and see you very soon. Bye-bye.